Um, if you could just make a note that the date on that spreadsheet in the footer is still the 2017 date. Oh, okay. There's a footer, huh? There's All right. Judy's making a note. There he is. So it's not to the server rec crimes? Mm -hmm. They're still meeting that? Yes, we are. Let's start it. Let's see. So, was everyone able to open the documents, or are there problems with that? I could open, I just had printing formatting issues, but yes, I could open it. Okay. So, all right, so we'll the meeting, it's, it's 30 minutes. If people are all right with the type of minutes or notes that I take, I would be happy to continue to do that. Thank you. All right, then. Um, other housekeeping items here, uh, conduct of meetings. So, so, we're a small group of five. We're an advisory committee, we're not an elected whatever. So, my preference is to just manage how we work by consensus. If any of us at any time wants to take a, a formal vote on something, we can just suggest it, but otherwise, we'll work by consensus. Does that seem suitable? <coughs> Thank you. I'm good with that. So, um, we have um, the, C the CIP files that Caroline printed out are in a folder that's separate from the CIP committee folder. And so it's not, it's not as readily accessible to the general public. So I'm asking the group if you would like me to make it readily accessible to the general public. Has, I guess the question is, have you all reviewed what all that is? I have some issues. Maybe we should talk about that on the 25th and people can review what's in the folder. Right. And, I think I got what you need. That's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's and then the before we start, uh, we're, we're going to take a future meetings and do it at the end. I don't want to keep um, Chief Dushan waiting. But I do would like feedback on the meeting notes that I did take. Was everybody okay with those? Yeah. Okay then. Without any further ado, we have. The RPD tonight, ready to present right. to us. And we have, I don't know if, do I not have a copy? Okay, so we have yeah, extra stuff. So, Bob, if you don't mind, um, maybe you're going to address it yourself, but. Um, well, it I'll just let you go, never mind. So, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's another question, not for you. Okay, I guess we'll start with the replacement of the vehicles. Uh, up until this year, uh, the plan had been that every other year we purchased a vehicle. We set aside $25,000, so every year uh, we spent, every time we purchased a vehicle, we spent $50,000. Uh, this year, because of the, uh, you know, going way back when we had a fairly new vehicle total and it was never replaced, it actually had mileage to all of our remaining vehicles. Uh, this year, the, uh, the CIP folks and the select board were kind enough to let us lease a vehicle this year, uh, you know, one year early than we know we purchased one, uh, in a long-term effort to stop bringing the mileage down on our vehicles. Uh, the vehicle that we're going to get rid of this year, uh, probably in September, um, right now has about 150,000 miles on it. I anticipate by the time we get rid of it, probably close to 170. The next vehicle, uh, has 146,000 miles on it right now. Can I, just, yeah, I don't want you to drop it. The, yeah, yeah, the, the one that we're getting rid of is a 2012 Ford Taurus. And we had that since 12? We've had that since 12. Yeah, and the, uh, the vehicle has 146,000 miles on it. That's a 2014 Ford Explorer. 14, yeah. We bought it in 14. We bought it in 14, yes. Both those bought and purchased, no leases. Both, right, those were bought and purchased. The 2016 vehicle has currently 60,000 miles on it, and the 2019 vehicle, we bought it in 18, but it's actually 2019, that currently has uh, 14,000 miles on it. Because I, I generally drive them for the first year to get the mileage down. And then after the first year, they, they, they go into regular patrol. Um, because we didn't, then 
the newest vehicles, everybody wants the newest vehicle, that would have the most mileage on it. So, but that, that's, that's what we do. So the plan is still to, uh, uh, to maintain, uh, uh, maintain a financial situation where, where we're still spending uh, the, the same amount of money, but I'm looking to lease additional vehicles uh, so uh, we can still get the mileage down even further, which is going to help us in the long run with our maintenance costs. Uh, so far, I know this year we are going to go over our maintenance line item. Uh, because the Taurus needed uh, some significant work at the beginning of the year, and the vehicle that has 140, I say 146,000 miles on, that's currently in Dover. It needed a new head gasket, it needed a new water pump, and new exhaust system. That's going to be about two thousand dollars. So it needs not. Boy, what you put it, you mentioned another lease vehicle which we discussed in the past. Which I was in favor for. Um, you're still, we're still continuing on the path where we're, we're purchasing every. The, this, the cycle we currently have, but we're just going to lease a little bit to kind of bridge and, and extend the life on some of the vehicles that we're purchasing. Correct. Um, just through this period, of work, we're still kind of making up for the total the early use vehicle. Um, at some point, it'll kind of wash. But, but are we looking at maybe continuing on a 10-year plan, always leasing? Have you well, I, I've gone out to, to 2024. Um, if you look at the, the, the form that I gave you, the top, 2019, lease number one, we're going to spend twelve thousand dollars a year for that vehicle. We spent th we're going to spend thirteen dollars thirteen thousand dollars to equip it. So we've actually for twenty nineteen we're going to spend twenty five thousand dollars for that new vehicle. In twenty twenty lease number one for the vehicle that we're, we're getting now twelve thousand dollars. Twenty twenty two twelve thousand dollars, and at the end of that we buy it for one for one dollar. So it's ours. Two year lease. It's a three year lease. Okay, and twenty. Uh, 20 next uh, next year I'm recommending that we lease another vehicle and um, I'm adjusting for inflation here so I have lease number two at thirteen thousand dollars for the first year ten thousand dollars to equip so of expense of thirty five thousand dollars so in 2021 we'll have two lease payments no new vehicle 2022 we lose the first lease payment for vehicle number one we lease, a, we lease the third vehicle, so we only have two, again, two lease payments for 2022, equipment up to 10000 for that third vehicle, so we're going to spend $36,000. 2023, we only have one lease payment for the newest vehicle. 2024, one lease payment uh, for the newest vehicle. So when you look at the end of 2024, we're still going to spend about the same amount of money, around $150,000. It's just we're going to have a savings on the other end when it comes to maintenance. Now, this is assuming the best case scenario that we don't have, we don't lose any vehicles to wrecks, or, or uh, we have significant uh, uh, mechanical issues with any vehicle that we, that we end up getting. But that would be crippling if we didn't have surplus vehicles. And you could see kind of. 2020 and 2022 are kind of your drop the old one, pick up the new lease, sort of, sort of swap. The equipping each, when we equip a lease vehicle, we're able to retrieve all that, right? Yes. So yeah. some, some of the equipment, see, this year, 2020, we install it. Right. Well, some of it. Okay. Well, yeah. well, 2020, uh, for this new vehicle year, Ford actually increased the size of the Explorer. So it's actually it's longer, it's, it's wider, it's taller. Uh, because of that, some of the equipment, uh, Will not come, fit, uh, come out of the Taurus and go into the uh, Explorer properly. We expect so that's going to happen. We expect that. Um, Is that why the equipment costs some more? Yes. I see. Yeah. That's that's, a, that's always going to be a cost. But, but that that would be worst case scenario because um, once we go from, from Explorer to Explorer, the the cost should be less. But I want to make sure that it had a significant amount of money in there in case Ford says, all right. Or redesign the vehicle again, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? So, so but can I just like clarify or summarize what you're saying that the thirteen thousand dollars for this year is because you're going from a Taurus to an Explorer a different size, correct? And then ten thousand dollars going forward should get you from an Explorer to an Explorer. Correct. Okay. So yeah, you said on a three no, sorry. Um, uh, not on a, on a three-year plan, there's going to be a significant portion where we're going to be outside of warranty on a leased vehicle, correct? No, the lease vehicle, uh, depending on what the what part of the vehicle is, uh, Ford now goes to 100,000 miles. But a three-year term, you're going to put, you're, you're going to put 
thousand miles in two years, aren't you? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Well, it, 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 we shouldn't, because um, now with the, with the new plan, uh, before the crews were just up for grab. We've actually assigned um, two full timers to each vehicle now, and the oldest vehicle goes to the part timers. Except there's a, um, a case of a detail or something like that taken out of town, and it's, it's the oldest vehicle. So um, hopefully now we're actually going to start spreading the mileage out a little bit more evenly over all the vehicles. So right. hopefully, where you know we have uh, you know, one vehicle now with uh, you know fourteen thousand, one vehicle with sixty thousand, one with one hundred forty-six thousand, one. Then hopefully the mileage will, will get a little bit closer as it increases in the future. Well, I agree to keep the miles down in the newer vehicle as a cheap car or as a you know, you know supervisory car, and not just being able to try to extend that term of coverage. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's a good idea. So, uh, so my question is, at the end of 2024, how many vehicles do we have and how many do we have? You're still going to have four. It does not increase the fleet at all. It just so, reduces, the, so it reduces the overall mileage and, and it should reduce the, the, the amount that we're paying for maintenance. So, in 2024, you, you, you're going to purchase and you're going to have a new one in um, 2022, but then you're off your two year cycle again if you're not getting one in 2024. I am hoping that because we reduce the, you know, as I project this, I'm hoping that we will be able to skip one year getting a vehicle. Um, okay. Around 2024 to 2025. Again, that's best case scenario. Um, you know, we may have to, as, as we start uh, using these, these new lease vehicles, and yeah, things, you know, all of a sudden we get really busy and the miles start racking up even more. I mean, we'll have to look at 2023 and 2024 again, but based upon what we're doing now, um, I think we should be golden until 2025. Okay. As long so, as we get the mileage down initially. So currently, um, you know, we were anticipating buying a cruiser in 2020 to 25,000. So you're saying we're not? No, 50,000. Every, every other sorry, year is 50,000 yes, for cruiser yes, and we're continuing on that. That's not changing. Yes, this is just to, insert, to, to gap. This is a bridge plan. Right? So we're still, so we're also buying a cruiser next year? No. So we're releasing it here. If you look at the time, in 2022. All okay. See, this is the one we picked up this year. So we have one year, so, two years, okay, three so, years. So the plan as it currently was is, you know, every other year we were buying it. Right, Correct. so we put we were putting twenty five thousand in each year and buying it. So, so this gives us the new annual amounts, right, on, on your schedule. Yes. So when, and I know you just you were hinting at it, and I'm sorry, I didn't quite get it. So when would we be back to purchasing? Some around twenty twenty four or toward twenty twenty five. I'm I'm shooting right for for today. I'm shooting for twenty twenty five. Or if the lease program continues to work as well as it does, you may want to continue to lease. Yeah. And, and did you say, Bob, that at the end of three years we can, we can buy it for a dollar? Yeah, at the end of the lease, the vehicle, it's essentially what we're doing is we're just financing the vehicle. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So at the end of the lease, we give, we give four a dollar and the vehicle's ours. Okay, so there's, there's some value in that as well, whether it becomes an open vehicle or either we keep it or we sell it. Or yes. And certainly, if we sell a vehicle that has 100,000 miles on it as opposed to 170,000 miles on it, the town's going to receive a little more, mm -hmm. uh, I would hope, mm -hmm. when it comes time to sell it. So, I'll leave it to the, to the board to figure out whether this kind of release needs a, its own more article. So it does. Did this year. It does. Know. And we did that for All this right. year. Okay. And it would again in. 2020, because he's a pro so to in cover, 2020 to cover the entire lease period. Right? Exactly. So in 2020 and in 2022, we need more articles. Okay. For leases, for new leases. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions about the leasing versus purchasing? All right. Okay. Next item, uh, 2020. I'm looking to replace two outdated the watch guard in cruiser video systems uh, those are in our two oldest vehicles right now um, uh, those were installed between 2005 2007 uh, general parts are no longer supported by watch cards so if we have a repair it's going to be very expensive um, in the last three years both of these units have been sent back to watch guard for uh, 
for some repairs. I think each repair will at least four to five hundred dollars. These units use DVDs as opposed to a to memory stick, and uh, you know, DVD storage is going to be useful. DVDs can be expensive. I, I probably have a thousand DVDs downstairs right now uh, with all with all these uh, older systems. Um, if we get two new systems, then all four cars will be identical. So no matter which car you get in, all the buttons are the same, and they have to operate the same. And uh, obviously, when the equipment is working properly, um, it's reducing in the long run our liability. And uh, installation price uh, for the two, uh, with, with the current pricing, should not be any any more than twelve thousand dollars. Is this new? This has not been on the plan today. No, this is new. This is okay. Can I just, just educate me a little bit here. These these view out the front of the uh, the front of the cruiser. Are they, they, they? Someone gets stopped. It views everything in case there's an incident. It views the uh, the front of the cruiser. It also does a 180 degree view in front of the cruiser. You get the sides, and there's a camera in the back seat that videos all the detainees in the back seat. And this saved information is something that we are required to maintain and be able to produce. I mean, and I'm asking numbers and like that, but this is something that we have gone back and reviewed a lot of this. Oh, well, data it's, it's, it's a requirement. I mean, it's a requirement. Any, any, right? Anytime we have it, like, especially at the D W I R S, uh, we have to make copies of those and let's go to the attorneys. Pretty we'll typical stuff. It's typical stuff. Uh, anytime someone calls and says, well, you know, your officer did this and whatnot, you know, we review it to see if the officer really did, uh, you know, what this person has claimed. And I will tell you that 99% of the time that people call and say, well, the officer did this, the officer didn't do this. Uh, I said, well, come on in, let's review the tape, review the tape, and then they walk out and say, well, I'm sorry, I guess I misunderstood. Um, so, so it's our so own The right, system has saved us on, on many occasions. Right. Yeah. Right. How many, so I'm, I'm assuming every cruiser has one of these things. Yes. So we have four. Yes. And they're valued at six thousand dollars a piece. That's the installation price, okay? Um, right now the one that we purchased this year was five thousand and twenty dollars. The one that once we installed in the vehicle that we're picking up this year. That came out of my equipment line now. Uh, installation is gonna be well that that, that installation is going to be part of the, the overall installation for the new car. But just taking out the old system and putting putting the new system in the two remaining cars next year uh, is probably going to be about four hundred dollars per vehicle. So I don't know what the there was concern, if you all recall, with DRA around fire radios, which is equipment and equipment and capital. And I'm thinking that we ought to suggest to the select board that um, you put this in operating and, and just um, manage equipment because individually they don't get $10,000. Well, there's no offer. Now that there's, there's like. No, when you say that, it makes me a little crazy because it assumes that there's some kind of threshold. And there's not there's a no threshold. threshold. But, but, the board, but that the board is able to do. What it thinks is the wisest thing at any particular point in time. Yes, but DRA considers those things as priced each, even if you buy lots of them. So they're going to question it on whether or not it's a capital expense. Well, question well, whether it's a part of the CIP. Well, right. Like this is a capital improvement program. So not to say that you can't do it. You know, they'll defer to the town to some extent. Um, it just begs the question and discussion, is that the best way to handle it? Because if you specifically vote to include it in CIP, that's one thing. But they would also suggest that perhaps we call it capital, you know, capital improvement and equipment fund. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it was a sticking point that radios were equipment rather than a building or some kind of fire thing. Well, and it can be. Well, right. 
So, so, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving you a directive by any means. It's just a discussion point because it was a discussion point about radios with DRA. That's all. And I, and I would think of it as if, if, if there were five radios a, a, every year that you were going to buy, then they, then they should be in the operating budget. But if you have to save money for it, if the idea right. is you have to save money for it, then it goes in the CIP. That would be right. that would be a logical way to explain it. Well, right. we have to save money for it because we're not going to buy these two until two years from now or whatever. And if that's not the case, then... I mean, I, I think I it, it, obviously it's perfectly appropriate for the board to have a discussion about this with Chief Ducharme and... and it looks like it seems to be a good idea to stick it in the operating budget. I, I'm not having an opinion. I just I just want to catch these things before we're making a Warren article that DRA is going to have a conversation Well, I would go back and look at the, the, the um, what was the enabling, our own town Yes, yes, we have to find that, the enabling legislation. Yeah, exactly. um, and I, well, you know me, I mean, I, I, would, I would go to the DRA and say, look, this is what, well, right, we can argue it either way. We just have to be ready to have that conversation is all. Historically, so, was it a problem last time we purchased grids? It's been 15, 10 years, but... There was no CIP. There was no CIP. Mm -hmm. So, the, the radios, um, it was decided at the last minute that the radios for the fire department did not come out of CIP just to avoid the budget. conversation, not because it was necessarily an admission of impropriety, but just so that it could not come back later as an accusation well, of a safer It was just a safer thing to do. The budget. Well, there was also yeah. money to have. And there was money in another fund that could be utilized that, you know, was appropriate for that. So it just worked out really well. Not to say this it can't work this way. I just think you have it. Appropriate for that. Well, from from who are we cowering in the corner? Just from the, I, I mean, I well, you know, is it that the DRA is going to go back and say, thou cannot have this foreign article? Is that? Um, or I think there's the, I, I, don't, I don't know that they would ever do that. I think they're just yes. advising that, you know, at your own risk, I guess. You know, risk of what? That's the question. Well, risk the, of what and from whom? Well, the only risk ever would be that a, I mean, the taxpayers are the one who would have a problem with it. It is their funds. And exactly. To be, and to, be, both, and to be spent according to the enabling legislation. But they would be voting actions. on that as an individual warrant article. Right. But, but if we want Warren articles to succeed, it might be better to avoid that conversation. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I just, you know, I, I, and I don't mean to say that we have litigious people who are going to have a problem with it. I just, I'm just pointing out that we had a conversation with DRE last year. That's all. Okay, so noted. Um, Thank you. Thank you. That was, a, that was a fun time, wasn't it? <laughs> I got my blood pressure going. Just like you guys. Did you miss it? <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Any other questions on the uh, camera system? Well, just, um, I'm sorry, I was up getting my water, I think. The, the, the comment about the DVD storage is expensive. Mm -hmm. Is that a rationale for getting this? I mean, I, I missed well, the, well, that. Well, that's one, one of the rationales. Um, because the, this new system doesn't have. No, it uses a memory stick, and what we're doing now with the memory stick, everything's getting downloaded, and we're using the uh, um, the big CGIS service at UNH to store Yay. the new videos. Okay. So, so we're not storage, having to store the storage locally. Storage, yes. We're not having to store the locally. Not, not on the two new units. On, on the one new unit plus the newer unit we'll install this year. That's going to go, that's going to go directly to our storage at UNH. Okay. Uh, with the other two units, because uh, we're download it to a DVD and a special program, I can't send that over there. So I've got a library in our evidence room. I would think that alone probably, would probably a couple thousand DVDs. What is I mean, your just retention period for that? saving the discs? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, at least three years, because anyone can file a civil suit up three years. Okay. So, we keep, so you can at least throw them away like, at some point. So that data could be also compromised. I mean, you, know, you upload it on a server of that caliber. It's yes. retrievable 24 7. You know, it's, it's always got to be there. Yeah, you know, you've got these disks that get flooded. You, you never know. Or for anything. Anything. Who knows anything. What else. You can't find them. Has, you know, I mean. Has UNH given any indication that, that at some point or day and time it would no longer be free storage? Not at this point, no. Okay. Um, they're still trying to get the rest of the county to, to come on board. Uh, I think there are only two agencies right now, or one of them. That, uh, that are utilizing you on each side.
what would what is what is the disadvantage to you? I, mean, I, I have no idea. I, th I think it's a control issue. Uh, They're not willing to give up the control. Yeah. So, what did you say the name of that was? The, you said some system. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's called CNET. A U N H. But it meets all it meets all the federal requirements on the CGS, which is Criminal Justice Information System Security. Yeah, it's all security. 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 We have an opportunity. Is that that is just for criminal justice stuff? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right now, yes. That's cool. Any other questions on uh, that? And so we're calling it Cruiser Video Systems. Is that do you have a, like a terse little descriptor for this one? Uh, you can put uh, in Cruiser Video Systems. Replace to in Cruiser Video Systems. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 2021 digital booking fingerprint system. Fingerprint system. I originally had this down for uh, 2020. Uh, however, when looking at priorities, I think the, the video system uh, is, is, has more of a, uh, a value uh, at this point. Uh, more, more of a need value. Um, currently, uh, as, as you know, uh, we're doing the old school uh, fingerprinting with the ink. And um, sometimes it's difficult when you have an unruly person down there, or they're slightly intoxicated, or they're impaired to some degree. And uh, these folks are getting ink all over the place. And when you have to do multiple cards, because we do uh, four cards one for FBI, one for state police, one for local, and then the disposition card. So we're doing two, two sets of two at a time. Whereas if we had a digital, digital, a digital fingerprinting system, we only have to do it once. And it will allow me to print all four cards, and um, it's actually more accurate. Uh, it doesn't leave a, it doesn't leave a mess like the uh, the current system does. And whatnot. It's actually in, in the long run, uh, you're you're dealing with unruly people or uncooperative people. Like let you know, the time that you they're unrestrained downstairs, so it makes it a little bit safer in the long run for the officer. Time difference wise, what is it, I mean. Well, on the average, I think you've got a super unruly you're gonna, you're file manager. How long does it take to fingerprint someone? Well, oh, get a good set, because I know that they can move. Or... Yeah, 15 minutes. So that's a period of time that... And, and with this here, we could be done less than five. But they're on the, the actual cost, fingerprint because you need, you need right. to physically right. grab their hands. Right, when they're, uh, when they're being uh, fingerprinted, they are uh, not restrained. So and, 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 and actually, this system is actually more accurate than the old ink, ink system. So it's something we may have to do in any ways at some point, regardless of this is where things are going. Now you've stored it digitally as well. Right, it's stored digitally, yes. And that, that, that's the future. I mean, everything is going digital in the future, so. You know, the system, uh, the system that we did have until last year was a hand-me-down from Lee. Uh, the unit that they had was probably 10 years old, and it was funding with the crew. And uh, so... But we're spending this money eventually at some point anyway, well, simply because of how it's less or or state requirements or right. Yeah. Would you would you say that most uh, local area departments are using a digital fingerprinting system right now? Some are, not all of them, because of the expense. Okay. Your your larger communities do digital. Who are some of the other ones that are not? Uh, I don't think Barrington is. I don't think Stratford is. New Durham is probably not. Okay. Probably I mean, small departments like ours, I mean, you know, some would probably consider this a luxury. You know, if you figure, when you really sit down and you say, how many times do you really fingerprint somebody per year? You know, we arrest approximately 100, 100 folks a year for, for offenses. But then we have fingerprints that we take for background investigations for employees, mm -hmm. um, for the town rolls, if those you know, folks who live in town, if they, need, uh, if they need fingerprints done for their employment, uh, you know, we do them for them as long as they either work in Rawlswood or they're, in a, they're a resident of Rawlswood. We don't, we don't charge them. So, so we're probably doing uh, maybe 150 to 175 fingerprint, different fingerprints per year. Does it require ink or can you now not use ink with the electronic system? Well, the electronic system, there's, there's no ink whatsoever. No ink. Yeah. That's what's what. You're actually, you're actually getting scanner. a scanner, and you, you put your fingers on the scanner, and the little screen there tells you if it's correct or not, and then if it's correct, it says okay, you put the button, and it's safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the idea that it's more accurate, because you don't have as much as 
Right. Um, for safety to Is it. there an opportunity to get a grant for this? I know that you're you're good at shopping for grants. Not not for that. No. Is um, so are 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 you disadvantaged if we wait until beyond twenty twenty one? No. All right. So that's just. Like this is my wish list. Yeah, yeah, okay. Do what you may. Yeah, okay. Just asking. Yeah. Just asking. Okay. 2023. Let's see if we can try to get one of those portable town emergency message boards again. Maybe enough people will forgot. <laughs> Maybe because we worded it as a radar trailer. I mean, that probably, that may have. Uh, but that is what we're talking about. But, but, yes, but, that is, but we can program the message. Right. It's scroll. a message board that can also be used as a, a traffic measurement device. So, and the reason I put that to 2023, because if you look at the cruiser, I mean, in 2023, at least as of right now, we're only spending $13,000 for one lease for that year. Wasn't there a period of time, though, that we were like, using it, a group of three towns were sharing time with it? Yes. What ever happened to that? That's just that that unit is no longer uh, functioning, and actually uh, the uh, Scrappy P came and picked it up and took it out of here yesterday. So it just wore out. It, it just wore out. Yeah. Like and how many the, years the service was that? Uh, must have been ten years anyway. That it was in yeah. service. It was in service. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, the problem with sharing equipment with other agencies is that multiple people are setting it up, multiple people are taking it down. It's not always the same person for the department. And so you don't always get the care. They don't, they don't take care of it like you would hope that they would. There are a number of times that we received it from the national department, but it would be missing the bolts to hold the sign up or the clips or whatever the case might be. So we actually went out and bought our own set, and then when we sent it to another agency, we actually kept them. Because, you know, it's not theirs, and, you know, one person not taking care of it, so you, you don't get the as much care. As it would also be pretty much impossible to track or document if indeed if there was any benefit from having this display, people speed in the driver, or even any messages. I mean, you can't well, track that. Well, you, well, you really the, only, the only thing that you're going to be able to track less is, access, is that, less you know, tickets. you call up and say, every single car going by on my house on Main Street speed. You got my text. Yes, they're all going 60 miles an hour. Let's take this thing out there. And uh, we can say, well, sir, uh, Kevin, uh, you know, we've had it out there for 12 days, and you know, no one's gone over 40 miles an hour. And these are the dates and times, and, and we'll record all that stuff. But that's not 25,000 in my mind. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see, you know, it, how can you document less speeders, less accidents, less less tickets? I mean, you really can't. We already right, have what you can that, document. But what you can document is, you know, and you can appease the folks that call all the time and say, every single car is going by my house at 90 miles an hour, or 80 miles an hour, 70 miles, whatever it is. And, you know, fortunately, a couple years ago, we brought that stealth unit. So we've been able to put that out there. And you know, we show the people the stats and well, okay, well, they're really not going seven miles over my house, they're only going forty one case might be. So But I am just trying to weigh the benefit for the right. expense. That, that that's all. And I, we've had that, we've had the same but, conversation. But it can be last used in emergency situation or road closures or you know uh, emergency uh, uh, the emergency uh, activities that are happening in town or you can put it out on by the fire station and announce a town meeting coming up. Or can or can or 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 you know, know. So, yeah, I, mean, I understand that. You don't think that psychologically they, they produce uh, I'm, I'm speaking my opinion right now. Where's the pain? I, I don't, I, you know, I, if I knew it saved a life or, you know, it, just, it prevented one accident or some, you know what I mean? That's one thing, but we can't, we can't document I think that. what you're saying is you just can't measure it. I just can't see it. Right? I just can't see the expense. You, you know, that's... Well, uh, there are probably studies in police journals or right. public safety yep. journals. And I think there are, are which yeah, is trying to say the, that just that you put it out there, people will go slower because it's yeah. flashing the speed at you. Yeah. So. Somebody I'm sure. Well, how many times have you driven, like, through Kittery? And they've got the little thing, the little mm -hmm. sign of the pole, and all of a sudden it starts flashing and it tells yes, you what the speed exactly. is. And what do you do? You slow down and okay, you can you exactly do $25,000 do something about Route 4 in Paragraph you know, right, right. Roberts? You know. yeah, can can $25,000 save an accident? Because those accidents happen. You know? Um, so I'm just trying to, you know, just cost and benefit, you know? But, but, you know, uh, you know, we borrowed the, the unit from Lee for a couple of weeks and we actually stuck it out of Route 4 near that intersection. 
And we put on there, do not use the brake down the pass. See, I, would, I like that. Right. I think that's worth the money and, 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 you know, for that. When the sign was there, it worked well. But you go out there today, and people are still passing when using the breakdown lane to pass. Um, you know, and I can't keep going back to Lee and saying, hey, yeah, yeah. I borrowed your, your machine mean, again, you know. It's also a state road, so we can't, what, we can do the portable sign thing. Well, we can't post we the can't sign yet. Yeah, right. right. We have to work with the state. We have to work with the state, state when we do that, so. But, you know, my guys will stay out there every now and then, and we'll stop the car, and everyone goes, well, you know, everyone passes on the right. Well, everyone speeds too, it doesn't mean to make it right. Right. You know? Um, but also, this year talking wish list, you're talking uh, 23, so yeah. I, mean, I appreciate that you put that in that order. And, 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 and I can see how you've been waiting them. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. So, how about how, how is your um, network and file server down there? Do you see any computer equipment upgrades? Is there anything well, to say about that? Um, I anticipate on taking care of that this year with uh, some surplus. Tom has informed us that we're still on Windows 97 base downstairs, and that expires February of next year. That's not good. 2007, uh, it, um, it's um, Windows 7. Windows 7, because we have the same situation up here. Windows yeah. 7. What are they stopping me? It's the end of uh, January 2019. It'll no longer be supported. 2020. 2020. I'm sorry, that's my second. I meant that's my yeah. So Tom has actually come up with a plan for us to, to replace all of our computers downstairs, all the ones that need to be replaced. And um, you know, I've got some surplus this year because we had to pay a couple of officers for a few months. So the plan is to approach the, the select board at the end of the year with a surplus and say, oh, now's the time to replace all the computers so we don't have to take it out of yeah. equipment next year or add it to CIP or whatever. And in that case, you know, hopefully we should be good for another five or ten years. And, and I think that uh, when, I'll, when we get to that point where we start replacing one or two a year, then it shouldn't have to go to CLP. It should come right out of the equipment fund. Okay. So, so that's all operating budget cost money moving around the permitted uses. So there's right. not an issue with CLP you know, using money that way. So, so you're so planning on, on managing that? Yes. Not. What do you anticipate that cost? Probably about 7000 it is there. Next week. It is, it's there. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. We're not waiting next week. <laughs> Anything else? Do we have, do we have questions of the chief No. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for Feel free to give me a call well, or text me. Thank you for giving us a reason to have a meeting today. Thank you for giving us a reason to have a meeting today. I'm not sure anybody is going to be ready. So I have a question, question, though, that I'd like to ask is, um, Right in front of my house. They, they, they replaced <laughs> the sign. Well, I'm supposed to be solving your problems here, Kevin. <laughs> really? Well, I'm oh, still in yeah. yeah. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Um, <laughs> we replaced that sign, you know, yeah. in front of the brick wall. Um, oh, so yeah, right. so, uh, yeah. Do you know the history of the other sign? I heard it had a very I morbid, we morbid had reason. We had two suicides within, within, uh, like, within a term. term. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, within about a month. Okay. They flew down over the street, right straight into the wall. Oh, and right. Right. And so at that point, uh, it, was, it was point, obviously. But the folks in town said, well, upcoming meeting schedule. So, Caroline, we're still on board for meeting July 25th. Wait. Wait. Highway and um, fire, fire and transfer station. Highway, fire, and transfer station, okay. What was the date again, Suzanne? 25th. 25th. So, highway, fire, and transfer station. And but we have a problem, yeah. and that was supposed to be the sum of the department heads that we were meeting with. I, I did send a message out to all of the ancillary departments. Nobody the else has any signature that they want to add. Yeah. Okay. Then I had the seventh. The seventh. Yes, yes, and that's the one that's problematic. Yeah. We have a conflict with that. All right. Then. We need to move on that one. So so that was going to be our review meeting when we have assimilated once we've assimilated the. Information. So, um, Caroline, do you have a do you have a, any suggested? Um, do you let me get my town schedule. Like, check out the meeting schedule. So I put digitally fingerprinted on the table. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have our Texas, um, you know, travel cards. So it's kind of cool. Use it for travel. You know, for like. Uh, 
TSA pre-check. Yeah, TSA oh, pre-check okay. and stuff. This is a it's like global entry TSA pre-check. Are we able to display it like on your like on your phone? There's my fingerprints, or did you actually have to print it off? No, they, 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 have, they have. 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 They I don't have fingerprints, so it's, it's really terrible. But it's um, I would say, what about um, Wednesday the 14th, August 14th? Um, okay. Or even Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesday, the thir Tuesday or Thursday that week would be better because I do have a, a garden club meeting on Wednesday, on Wednesday the 14th. How about Tuesday the, then? The Tuesday would be much better because I realize it's really Tuesday's the 6th, right? The 13th, the following week. Uh, we want to show you we yeah, we're not going to get it that yeah, week. Okay. And that's yeah. still like... There's a withdrawal later. meeting on the 6th of August. So oh, okay. So it's, it's and there's planning it's board that we can... It's other commitments. Okay, so... We'll so, August, so, so August 13th, Tuesday, August 13th, 6.30 here. And it's to have our, our summary thoughts about the... Um, CIP, the, yes, the yeah. board's yeah. recommendations. Yeah. 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 August 7th. Yeah. The 7th, we're having a stormwater mm -hmm. public yes. hearing, which you're all invited to. Yeah, what is that? Um, it is part of the stormwater management plan. It, it is part of the um, outreach. It is, it is part of the outreach program that we have to do, um, hosting a public hearing to inform residents that we are an MS4 community. We have a stormwater management Show plan, us. and yes. what are the roles of the residents? What are we trying to inform you all about, and why is this important? Um, is there any chance of getting this in advance from our 25th? That would be a, a lovely thing, wouldn't it? Just, yeah. just mm -hmm. if we can, if not. I know it's so I will put this into the plan. Yep. What they is and what they do. Ooh, that was painful. Yeah. I'll let you know when oh, it's I was ready. Do that. You okay? Yeah. Otherwise, um, unless somebody else has an official... If we anticipated that would be our final, because we, we will have met, we went with the peace police today, the next one is highway transfer, transfer um, and, and fire. Now, what about we don't do town? library or, or town. Um, that's a good point. The town, can we do that one on the 13th as, as well? Because we don't really, uh, I shouldn't say we don't really I mean, have there any, uh, I mean, right now the plan has... I, I, the only thing I can imagine that the town would have would be um, possibly street lights if the board doesn't do that sooner now, this year. Um, otherwise, Items related to this building. So the town hall boilers are warrant for this year. So yep. is that going? We're probably going to. So we learned during that budget training that we can extend it a year. We got some information that. Um, we still need more information. We still need more information, but we think it might last five to ten more years. But we're waiting to get information about from towns and about the maintenance that's been done on it. And there was a miscommunication of other people need to, you know, we need we need the interested parties to talk some more. So it may or may not be good. I, I'm not sure that everybody's on the same page. But there's a good chance, I you know, 50-50 that it'll happen this year or that the board will extend it into next year. And then it may or may not happen next year according to what we determine about its so, actual state. So the money uh, that has now been authorized... I, I would hold and keep it encumbered. And so that would... We might expend it this year after all, or we might expend it next year. Or we could, depending on what you find out... Or wait, we're just going to... Wait even longer. We can only extend it one year. So if the board decides not to buy a new boiler in 2020, yeah. then it will go back on the CIP for another three right. years out or something. Right, exactly. But, yes, and the money will get returned back to yes. CIP. Yes, okay, so, so those, are the, those are the options. Yes. The current board article would suffice for either the expenditure this year or buy an extension next year. Yes. But if the town finds out that the current boiler can really it may, so may be able to hold on to it, yeah. And we would just start fresh and put this back, put the boiler back on with whatever we think we should have. 
Is that correct? Right, in which case we can return $20,000 to the fund, like keep it fully funded for, you know, the three years out, or we can reallocate the funds. Yeah. So who, so is there anybody that can report to us on the generator? So the other things on this are the generator, the town hall compressors. Uh, I'm going to just table conversations about the police facility. Uh, um, so I've been having a lot of conversations with the school facilities director who is sorting through all the paperwork that we have. Um, and all of and, and trying to learn what he can about any maintenance that's been done on the systems that we have. It's 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 slow, and at some point we're gonna max that gratis situation. So I don't want to tax that, and I'm not sure the extent to which we're gonna find out whatever we're gonna find out. So it may be um, what he has made clear is that he's recommending to the select board that they do a full engineering assessment, which is going to cost tens of thousands of dollars. So I don't know if the board's going to put that on the warrant or not. You know, thirty-ish thousand dollars. So there's that, and that's separate from. Um, he's recommended um, that we go with a different vendor to um, replace the. Um, he's replacing the AC filters for us at our expense. Um, but to get an AC vendor to clean out the coils, it looks like that's never really been done. Um, he would like to, the board is evaluating whether to, to change out the lighting to LEDs with an Eversource proposal that has 50% um, loan forgiveness. He would like to see us wrap ACs into that, which would be the more cost effective thing to do, but we don't have the right kind of human resources necessarily to manage that. Like that's something that so, so, so I, I'm not a, really clear what we're going to do yet. Then we have a loan forgiveness that would cover the ACs? The, the program that w would do the LEDs could also incorporate the ACs. Um, and potentially even the boiler. Um, but, but not the boiler if the boiler doesn't need to get done. But the ACs probably really do need to get done. Um, but it's about who's going to scope it and spec it and get the bids and figure out the state program. And it, 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 rather than signing on the dotted line, it becomes this bigger project. Yeah, so I see that. So when might the town have... That's a really good question. Isn't it wonderful? Um, a question? <laughs> so Jermaine, what might even say? Entirely. Um, I will hope for the 13th we'll have more information anyway for the 13th. Um, I, I have to be upfront and say that there might be a need to have another meeting this day, really. Um, he's on, Mr. Fortier's on vacation this week, I'm on vacation next week. We're going to regroup the week of the 25th when this group meets again. Um, I, I, I can't think that we're going to have a full report by then, though. He's reading materials on his vacation. Um, he still has more conversations to have and more looking around to do and calling people. Um, the other thing is, I, I'm hoping that the board can do some things like maybe um, an asbestos assessment this year, which is a relatively small amount of money, maybe $2,500 if we can find that. Well, do we think that's an issue? It's, like it's not that we or think or it's an issue, we just don't know that it's not an issue. And, and if you're going to do anything, you need to really know that it isn't an issue, or that it is. You know, like, you, you need to know. And that's because you need to know, because any work that starts, and if they discover it, that work stops. Yeah. It so stops in, in the middle of a mess, yeah, and right, it becomes right, more right, expensive. Right, yeah, yeah. So it's just the diligent thing to do. Yeah. 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 Not that anybody knows, no. You, you know, so, it, it's, I mean, what we're, what we're dealing with is, the result of really not having a person responsible for this particular building from a facilities point of view. Yeah. It, it was just, as far as I could see, never part of the scheme. I think, you know, I, I don't know why. And, and well, the information he's giving us is valuable. You know, case in point with the AC LED situation, it's still a problem that we don't have somebody that has the right kind of knowledge and enough time to still really manage this building. So he's going to provide us a report that will at least say, you know, you should replace the, the something filters every X period of time so that somebody knows to do that. That'll be helpful. 
But um, what I'm hoping, though, is that we can spend short money this year to, to inform this plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. But um, there's no short path to real answers, though. It, it has been, you know, I clearly, I mean, the boards I served on were part of that neglectful situation. I mean, there just has not been anybody. We were sort of tripping over things as they came about. Right. Which is not my way to do things. Yeah. So it, it would be nice to try to figure out a way to be more comprehensive about. We, we really need someone that oversees all of the, our town. Facilities. Well, because the same is true of the fire department. Yeah, the, the fire you know, chief does it. The highway department, the transfer station, you know, who's in charge of knowing when any of those systems should be upgraded or roofs replaced? Nobody's charged with that responsibility. Right, that's correct. And so it's always been kind of piecemeal, public on the update. You know, and to a certain degree you can get by. You know, sometimes you can get by with that until you can't anymore. So well, this something's going to fall through the cracks. Exactly. And, and a $12,000 really AC busts up expensive. unexpectedly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but it's a similar know. situation where, you, you know, X number of dollars for someone's salary solves that. You, you know, you can because you can pay someone that knows what's going on, that knows about all these buildings, can, can look at maintenance schedules, knows what equipment's operating systems are in them. But it is, it'd be a full-time job if you're looking at it. Yeah, we, uh, they, we assume that the fire chief is in charge of the firehouse, you know, structurally, when the fire chief's job is very busy being a fire chief. Well, yeah, even if you know, the highway busy. department, right. he's, he's, he's managing our town infrastructure. Well, but you can't even assume that they have the expertise right. to inform that the boilers are having a problem or not having a problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Good and point. that's the bigger problem. You know, you hope that the fire chief that is elected is qualified to be a fire chief, you know? Right. <laughs> that's that's like, <laughs> He's not an architect, so, but it's a money thing because that's, we certainly solve the problem. But that, I mean, that's an important point, Kevin, and, and as you know, the, the school board worked a number of years to try to get a facilities director, and it has made an incredible difference sure. in how the building is maintained. And, and the, the, what's music to my ears is, you know, the cupola has been fixed. And I ran into uh, Mr. Fortier, and he said, I, and I said, so what about maintenance going forward? He said, it'll be on a maintenance schedule from here on out. So I said, how long will it last? That was my question. He said, it'll be on a maintenance schedule from here on out. It'll last. It, it'll just last because it's going to be maintained now. It's going to be painted every couple of years. It's going to be, everything's going to take care yeah. of it. And, and, and the school board has clearly seen savings. In, in in, incredible savings. Incredible savings. Um, so by having a position could really pay for itself. Because he's charged actually, with it. That is his responsibility. That's his responsibility. He does his job. And he is also, of course, a, a custodian. And he also does yeah. custodial yeah. duties oh, as well. Okay. He doesn't he's not just the facilities that, manager. That's he, what I was gonna ask. He, he was he he's, is, he's not doing facilities no, manager. He's not full time. time. No, he, he is also a custodian. Is it is it possible for the oh, this is actually really a governance question, so I'm just gonna We've had the conversation yeah, so just so you know know, like CIP questions We tracked it. <laughs> but but we're, we're having those conversations. Well, when I asked about a sign, I kind of got some hairy eyeballs and scolded because it was off topic. So oh, yeah. I think in yeah, fairness, I mean, and I love the agenda, Kevin. but just in fairness, <laughs> you, know, you, you humored me because I was quick on it. <laughs> Anyways. All right, anything else that we would like to bring up? All right, are we ready to say adieu? I think so. We should budget a longer time, though, for the next period. Of time. The next meeting we're meeting with fire yeah. through the three fire, of yes. so that will yeah, this one just be It's going to be a two-hour meeting. Do you anticipate that we'll get some I will reach out to them and hope. Okay. You just help. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. okay. that's the best I can do, isn't it? <laughs> All right, fair enough. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for taking the helmet and keeping us updated with the